And now I would like to bring another man who is flying the flag for humanity too, um, Ian Gibbons. He's actually a professor. He trained in uh, as a zoologist, actually, but he's now a neuroscientist and professor of anatomy and histology up at Flinders University. Lucky them. Uh, of course, he has a, over 100 scientific publications um, on things like microscopic structure, the function of neural pathways, controlling internal organs. Um, and he basically teaches extensively to diverse ranges of student groups. Ian's poetry um, has been very successful indeed. Um, he's been in the Best Poems Australia, he's been on Radio National, um, and this year he's actually won at Friendly Street, which is blind judged, this, what's called the Single Poets Competition. So at Writers Week next week, next year in 2012 at the Adelaide Festival, he will have a book of poetry published. He's always interested in trying to connect science and arts. He's a brilliant communicator and he loves doing electronic soundscapes, videos, images and he's been involved in a number of exhibitions and performances here at Rias. So I'd like to invite to the stage Ian, who's going to really surprise you, I think. <laughs> okay, thanks. I'll, um, I'll just, before I start, because of a slight technical hitch that we couldn't fix quickly, I have to wear earphones while we're doing this, because um, I'm using a different microphone. So this um, bunch of things I'll go through with you, it's the first time I've done them in this sort of format, and um, Hopefully it'll all work. And so what we're going to be doing is exploring that sort of space between the environment and natural environment and technology and the people who get caught in between. Okay, so we've got some sound here, yep. First, First one's one called travel, travel Plans. plans. Stay in your lane, she muttered. The smell of crushed metal followed us like tire tracks, like the feeling of sniffer dogs fussing around my ankles, as if I had contraband in my socks or crumbs of mutton sandwiches in my grandfather's Gladstone bag. She mentioned something about rugby players, or maybe 10-ton trucks, semi-trailers, B-doubles, a road train. The radio faltered. Once more, we were reduced to talkback, arguments about bicycle lanes, underpasses, overpasses, implicit rights of way. Tasmania was a good idea, so was Uluru. But with our rear vision flashing, kaleidoscopic, good ideas simply disappeared into the runoff. Just so much stormwater running through the floodways, our personal contributions to climate change.
100 words. Randomly tuning in somewhere outside Adelaide southern suburbs en route for beaches more or less pristine, wind-hilled, sandbanks stalked by black-shouldered kites ashore, white pointer sharks at sea, radio national crackles, shifting static, momentarily right-channeled, strands today's interviewee portside, deconstructing bloody lineages, waterborne refugee tales unapologetic on the contradictory problems of translation, suggesting, as he remembers once having been told, that non-native speakers, aren't we all, should learn 100 new words each day, practice, internalise, syntactically interweave, conjure up Dali-esque associations, invoking imaginary journeys, like future tense dreams, and I, tongue-tied, considering my alphanumeric options, decide to begin again tomorrow. Fight, or maybe as a 
claimed in the sporting pages, a series of pugilistic incidents. Someone had cash, others concealed weapons, yet another aimed cameras through Finger Street windows. Flying foxes filled the dust, stole the scent of ripe mango, left the trail.
snake was in the grass, they said. A viper on the breast. A boa, they said. Constricted around his heart. That's what someone told me. And that's what someone told me about the single life.
what someone told me. Someone told me that the simple life is a bit of a myth. Almost totally unachievable. Our transnational age, our digital technology, and wireless communication. So should we pause a moment? That's what someone told me. Yeah, that's what some told me. Yeah, that's what some told me about the simple life. 